In today's video, we're going to look back to one year ago when we seen a huge trade in the 2022 NHL draft that involved the Montreal Canadiens, the Chicago Blackhawks, and the New York Islanders that saw established players like Kirby Dock and Alexander Romanov changing teams. We'll see how this deal's worked out and analyze it a year later, coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned today, I wanted to do a review on a pretty significant uh, trade we've seen happen just over one year ago, last year at the 2022 NHL Draft. It's always fun to look back in retrospect and say, did these teams actually make out pretty well? Who won the trade? Uh, are all teams happy or was there kind of, you know, some things that they'd probably wish they could have done differently, which is quite often the case here. But I want to take a look at this deal, which actually comes in. It's uh, You can kind of look at it as a three-team trade, but essentially it's three teams, one bigger trade, but it's kind of done in two separate parts. So essentially, things got started with Lou Lamarillo and the New York Islanders trading their first-round pick in the draft to the Montreal Canadiens for defenseman Alexander Romanov. Now, Romanov was a promising young Russian defenseman for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, you know, certainly somebody who you can tell is very passionate about the sport, loves the game, um, obviously known for throwing some big hits. I'm not sure that his offensive upside is going to be overly huge in the NHL. Seems to have a pretty good shot. Uh, but never really got deployed much in the NHL so far when it comes to power play or anything like that. I think his long-term potential is more around being potentially more like a shutdown defenseman. So essentially the Islanders wanted another top six defenseman. They get their guy with Romanov, who Kent Hughes and the Montreal Canadiens made available. Certainly uh, the retooling part of the team, rebuilding part of the team, had them obviously you know, willing to trade some younger players that – they weren't necessarily a part of bringing to the organization. That quite often is the case when you see a change in uh, management uh, or you know leadership within the, the organization. So the Chicago Blackhawks obviously also had Kirby Duck up for grabs, which was kind of rumored going into this draft. And Montreal obviously had their eye on this guy, but they needed more than just what they had to, to flip over to Chicago to make them complete this trade. So then Montreal takes that first-round pick, and they trade it to the Chicago Blackhawks. And they also add on another selection, which was a 22 uh, NHL draft third round pick, which turned out to be Gavin Hayes in exchange for Kirby Dock. So Chicago gets a first and a third. Uh, and now obviously this pick for the Islanders wasn't super high. Uh, you know, we're getting closer to the midpoint of the first round. And obviously the Blackhawks go and they draft Frank Nazar. Now, I've seen different ways to pronounce his name. Some of, I've seen some call him Nazar. Some say Nazar. I, I think Nazar is the proper way to pronounce this this uh, Nas name here. Obviously, he's still playing U.S. college hockey, so he has not signed so far here in the NHL. But he's a promising prospect that I think the Blackhawks are quite happy and anxious to get into their organization. So let's analyze this trade from all perspectives. First up. Of the New York Islanders, if you look back, would they be pleased trading their first-round pick for Romanov? Or should they have maybe kept that pick and had their chance to get themselves a pretty good prospect here like the Blackhawks did? Certainly Romanov's first season with the Islanders, I think it's fair to say, was up and down. Uh, Long-term, I think he can fit there. Uh, I don't know that I honestly would have traded a first-rounder for them, especially with the fact that the Islanders have one of the weaker prospect pools in the NHL. They have an older team. They have a lot of guys that are leading this team, getting up there uh, north of 30. You know, you're looking at, obviously, their identity line, Martin, Clutterbuck, Sezikis, you know, prime examples of that, but even some of their more prolific scores and more uh, play a bigger role in the offense, like Anders Lee, Brock Nelson, Kyle Palmieri. Uh, you know, they're getting up there a little bit too. Last year they had Zach Parise as well. In his late 30s, not clear yet if he's returning this season or not. He may end up calling it a career. Uh, we don't know the answer to that question just yet. But either way, he was part of the team last year when his trade was going down. Um, you know, they obviously have some other guys like you know Bo Horvat, Matt Barzell that are a little bit younger uh, as well. Now on the blue line, uh, they're not as old on defense as they were at forward. Certainly, you know, Pelik, Pulik, uh, and Romanov and Dobson make up. For the most part, your top four, you got Scott Mayfield in there as well. Uh, who's a, you know, a bit older, but not overly old either. So uh, they have a few other prospect defensemen, uh, obviously, like Sebastian Ajo, who has been in and out of the lineup, uh, Bull Du, and, and another one, Bodie Wild, unfortunately never really panned out for them. So 
I don't know. To me, I, I don't not sure I would have made this trade if I'm Lou Lamarillo. I, if I'm trading a first round pick, I honestly think I would have wanted a higher end defenseman. Um, and maybe Romano, he's still young. Maybe he becomes that guy. Now I understand he'd be a good fit with the Islanders. They obviously had uh, some other Russian players, which I know Russian players are fond of. You know, playing together. It's a it's a big culture change when you come to North America. If you can have, if you're from a, a European or country or Russia, like you know, to have some other players in the team to speak your language and are familiar with, you know, what it's like back home. It, it can make a difference to make you acclimated and kind of fit in and all that. So I do see there, you know, being. Um, a fit there from a you know personal standpoint, family standpoint for sure. Um, and again, I just uh, you know if they had a prospect like Nazar in their prospect pool, I think the future might be you know a little bit more bright. I just think that you know long term here to have their higher end forward available might have been the better way to go. But it's still early to really say. But my gut instinct says maybe the Islanders should have kept the pick. Now, of course, they traded this pick. Goes to Montreal for Romanov. Montreal moves on from from Romanov. And as much as I think they were fond of him and could see him, he could have stayed. Honestly, I, they had so many defense prospects that they could afford to part with him. And that was a big part of the, what happened here. I mean, look at just the, the defensemen that came in last year in Montreal that was starting to get their feet wet and, and uh, get some NHL experience, like Jordan Harris signs at the college, Caden Gooley. They got uh, Jaden Struble sign. Uh, they picked up Kovacevic off of waivers. And, uh, you know, Arbor Jacki jumps into the lineup. It's a, a bit of a surprise. And, and that's just, that's not counting NHL quality defensemen. They already had, like, some older guys. And there's more coming. You know, they still got... You know, obviously, which at the time was a little bit harder to predict, but like Lane Hudson was emerging as a top pick, even though he was a late pick. He's going to be a real, real good player. Then they get David Reinbacher this year. So they could certainly afford to part with Romanov. So for them to get the first round pick definitely makes sense. Now, of course, they could have kept that pick, but instead they treat it with a third for Doc. Now, Doc is a player, you know, a, a recent first rounder, third overall just a few years back, uh, had a few years of NHL experience. And to be honest, I think I like this deal for Montreal because they could have traded uh, or kept the pick and made uh, a selection for a player that would be an impact player in a few years. And they get instead they get a player who's ready to come in, already kind of going through some growing pains and some development since being drafted, and is ready to have more of an impact right away and be a big part of the team down in the future. At least you kind of already know what you're getting. Whereas some of these other guys in the draft, there's still some more question marks. Doc's had a few a couple of years to develop, and you've seen what what he can do. Um, so just you know, a little bit more certainty than what you're not sure of sometimes in the draft. Because obviously, when you're drafting players, you're looking at hoping that you're right or what they're going to be down the road, and they're, that's not always the case. So certainly from Chicago standpoint, they get two picks for for Doc. Um, you know, they get Frank Nazar, Gavin Hayes. Uh, I know if you look at the Blackhawks, the way they unloaded some of their younger players at last year's draft, including Doc and Alex DeBrinkett, you know, these guys were not overly old. They were still, you know, in their early 20s. Uh, obviously, DeBrinkett a few years older than Doc, but still under the age of 25. And they didn't really get huge returns. Uh, you know, for DeBrinkett, they got a first, second, and third. For Doc, they get a first and third. You know, at the same time, Chicago is certainly they're, – they're starting between what they got in 22 and what they added in 23 at the draft. They're starting to accumulate a pretty good-looking prospect pool. Clearly, that was, it's you know, substantially enhanced by getting lucky in the lottery and getting first overall so they could get Connor Bedard in 2023. That's a game-changer for any team. So, you know, they couldn't have predicted that at the time. So for now, I'm going to say, you know, I don't, I like to trade better for Montreal, but I think Chicago did okay. And in retrospect, tearing it down the way they did, you know, long term at least could be, could be the good move here. I mean, would it have been better off to keep Doc, to bring it? Probably could have put a few more butts in the seats, you know, sold a few more tickets and merchandise, maybe won a few more games, but maybe they don't pick us high in 23, right? Now that's a difference in your lineup. You probably win a few more games, score a few more goals. And they were making it clear they didn't really want that. They wanted to ice a team that was not overly competitive for at least one year so that they could get this top, you know, generational franchise player. And it worked out. So ultimately, I like this deal for Chicago because of that. 
that they were able to get Bedard because they were able to move some of these other players. So we're not just talking about the dock trade anymore. We're talking about the uh, the Debrinket deal as well and some of the other things they did. So I don't I don't have any issue with it from the Chicago side, the Montreal side. I like what they did. They basically gave up Romanov for Doc. Doc is going to be, he may be a winger, but he could be a top six winger or top six center. They have some versatility there. He's got good size. He's young that can grow with a lot of their other prospects like Cole Caulfield and Nick Suzuki, uh, you know, not who are not proud, but came into their, their system as prospects and have graduated to be, you know, solid NHL players. Uh, Montreal's at a stage now where they've got, you know, they've got uh, some players that are, you know, you've got like three or four guys that are, you know, you're looking at 22, 23, 24, and then you've got the next wave that's starting to come with, you know, getting the first pick the year before and getting Slavkowski, you know, and then obviously he'll come into his own, and then they get Reinbacher coming and Hudson coming and some of these other defensive prospects, uh, you know, and you still got Joshua Waugh and Riley Kidney and all these guys that are still hopefully going to become players for them. You've seen a, a huge jump in, um, I guess, where you'd rank them on the prospects with Raphael Harvey Pinard this past year as well. So, like, the Habs certainly uh, could afford to make this move. Uh, so, I like this trade for both those player, both those teams. The only one I'm not real sure of is the Islanders. The Islanders really, but if they don't trade that first-round pick, maybe the rest of the trade doesn't happen because Montreal clearly, you know, uh, wasn't trading their first rounder for 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 this. They needed to get an extra first rounder because they had the first overall selection at this draft, right? So the only way they were going to be able to do it is to get another first round pick. I didn't think Romanov would fetch that, but it did. So from the Islanders, due to the weak prospect pool, I think they'd be better off to take the the younger player that they could inject into their lineup in another year or two. I just don't know that Romanov was that much of an impact. But maybe I'll be wrong. We'll see. So ultimately, I think, really, uh, the Habs win this deal. They get the best player. But it worked out nicely for Chicago, too. And the Islanders, I think, in retrospect, might want to do over. But I understand what Lou was trying to accomplish. Um, you know, the, the type of player he was going after with Romanov was a player that they needed. I just don't know that he was the right guy. I would have went with more of a guy who's just maybe a different style and somebody, I, you know, I think they could have maybe gotten away with giving up a different level of return. Maybe not a first rounder, maybe something different. I don't know what it would have been. I just, in that draft where they were picking, I would have been reluctant to move it, but that's me. So ultimately that's my review of this trade a year down the road. I still like this deal for two out of the three teams questionable though for the islanders and like to know what everybody thinks here as well did the teams that are involved in this trade do the right thing has this trade worked out for chicago montreal and the new york islanders let me know your thoughts in the comments and we'll discuss further if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and stick around we'll keep you up to date with all the news rumors and analysis of all 32 nhl teams thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time